Hi. Um, my name is Fredrik Karlsson. I'm working as a CIO at uh, Hogia. And I'll uh, discuss modern on-premise and cloud-based data centers. And uh, most of the sessions that are here today are discussion analytics and BI and information. And I think this session will uh, look into the way we protect and store the information that all you guys and I need to preserve because we don't want to lose it. Um, firstly, I talk about Hogia as a company. It's just one slide. And then three bullets regarding why would anyone invest into a local data center today? And secondly, is there any differences between a local data center and a cloud-based data center? And finally, as Hogia invested into a data center, is green initiatives actually worth it? Hogia was founded in 1980 and been here for 36 years. Um, we develop software for the finance and business systems, for uh, human relations and uh, the transport sector. Currently, we are 600 employees made up of 27 companies uh, located in Scandinavia and UK. The turn turnover last year was uh, 500 million Swedish krona. We grow approximately by 25 employees per year. And the main reason for this is that we move currently towards the next generation of software. We move from the classic client server software into cloud-based software. And that's a project that we call the Hogia Star, which is a, a, a new wave of software that we will deliver to our customers. And this is rather really important to understand about Hogia when it comes to the next slides. And first of all, we are a software development company, which means that the source code is very vital to us, both in security and to maintain uh, the, the information. Secondly, the software that we develop, we also sell to the customers. And if the customer would like to, we can host the software at us. So they, they, uh, we run the software for them. So they don't, they don't need to take care of any upgrades or, or storage or backup, everything. We do that for the customers as a hosting feature. Why invest into a local data center? Hoga had until last year two data centers locally. And this is not an easy question today to answer just because of there is the cloud. You have you can buy or build virtual service at Amazon, at Google, at Microsoft Azure and, and different other areas. You can also buy a place in a co-location, which means that you, you buy uh, square meters in someone else's data center and you, you rent the, the space. So we actually made the decision after one year's uh, discussion to actually build a local data center. Even though we are moving to the cloud with our software and the way we are hosting them to our customers. And why is that? Uh, I will come back to why we didn't go for a co-location solution, but when it comes to the cloud, systems cannot run in the cloud due to different reasons. One of them are legal reasons. There are customer-specific reasons, um, you have performance issues or latency because everything goes over the internet. There's integration problems, you could say, sometimes, which means that it, it 
can be hard to create the integrations between one system and another system. The information could be classified. Uh, it could be physical hardwire components, which actually can't be moved from a physical uh, data center into the cloud. An example of this is infrastructure like networking equipment. Um, and you can also have company policies that says that, well, we know that the cloud is there, but we would like to have a local data center. That's the company policy. So, are we the only one actually investing into data centers today? No, uh, there is a great demand for data centers today. In Europe, before 2020, there's a demand of over 200 data centers with a size of one megawatt hour or more. And this is huge. They are enormously when they are this big. The data center I will show you is 70 kilowatts hours. So it's a difference between 70,000 and 1 million. So they, they need to build over 200 data centers of this size in Europe in three years. And our small data center took six months to build. And that data center that we will see later on is 52 square meters. So, who are the stakeholders? Well, ICTs are one of the big stakeholders here. And ICTs is like the telecom operators. They need, there's a huge increase demand for high bandwidth. You have the 5G mobile networks that are coming, so they need to expand enormously. So, they are the main stakeholders when it comes to building large data centers today. So, okay, if we bought or built a data center. And I talk about three different areas. High security, in order to protect the information. Um, the hybrid solution between cloud-based data centers and local data centers. And finally, the green initiatives. This is not the best slide, I know. It's full of information. I'm sorry for that, but we built a high security room from Lampertsrittel in Germany. They are the only company in the world, except for one company in Brazil, actually, but they're the only company in the world that, on the commercial market, could deliver a data center that fulfills uh, the ECBS standards, that's the highest standard or highest sec security you can achieve today or buy for money if you're not Facebook or, or other big companies that develop their own hardware. It withstand uh, a fire of 1,000 degrees Celsius for one hour and the cooling the next 24 hours. The temperature will never go above 70 degrees and the relative air humidity will never go above 85%. And this is very important when it comes to information. You need to keep those numbers low because the hard rise will otherwise vaporize. It handles standing water. It can handle explosion. Uh, nearby explosions. I'm not sure if uh, any one of you know if you have a data center locally, but where we have our data centers, there uh, is a railroad or a railway, a railroad um, quite near. So you need to think that there might be a gasoline wagon standing outside and exploding. What will happen to the building? What will happen to a data center? Also, it's dust and water uh, tight. It will handle basic protection from electromagnetic shocks. And the primary purpose is to protect what is most valuable to all, and that's the information. The information that we are discussing here today, how we are going to manipulate or 
handle and presentate. If, if I would say that if a company would lose a large amount of information today as a result of a fire in the data center, I wouldn't be surprised if that company would disappear within a year. It, it's so much easier to buy new hardware than to recreate lost information. So this is why I'm talking about high security data centers and, and the importance of that. Here's a picture, or two pictures actually. The right one is the data center, our data center. It's a room in a room. And the, the left picture is a schematics of how it could look like. There's a, they build a plate on the concrete floor. They bolt the plate down to the concrete. And from the plate, they build the, the walls and the ceiling. And there's an installation floor under which there's cooling water, there's fiber optics, uh, network cabling, and uh, all this is going through specific channels that are very, well, it takes some time to reopen them, you could say. So it's very important to um, put all the cabling in there as much as you could in, in before you um, start up. So it, it's it's a gray box. Nothing more than that. Okay, so I'm going to do something that always well it seldom works when you do a demonstration. I'm going to show you a YouTube clip. And <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, well, not much. OK. What this will demonstrate is they explode 200 kilograms of TNT 40 meters away from uh, exactly one of these buildings or the modules. And I'll see if this works. No. That, that's all to it. it. The walls are bending maximum 30 centimeters, and then it flexes out again. Everything within is intact. Oh, sorry. Now I need to get out of this. OK, so. That's a bit about um, high security data centers. Uh, I now we'll move into local data centers versus cloud-based data centers. Uh, and this is forming what we are called a hybrid, or what most, most companies call hybrid cloud, which where you actually use a local data center in combination with a cloud-based data center. Uh, the local data center has pros and cons, and a cloud-based data center has pros and cons. And in our case, the cloud data center is Microsoft Azure for us. If you have a local data center, the pros is that you have a quick physical access to the data center. And something strange called that I call sense of control. If the management can tell colleagues that I do know where all the information is located. It's in the basement. 
and everything therein, that's our data center. That is a sense of control, that's something positive. And this also applies to many technicians. If they know where the boxes are, then they feel a sense of control. And even though it's not really like that anymore, but that, that's a fact, that's a physical fact. The cons when it comes to local data center is that there's longer, longer lead times for new infrastructure because it takes time to, to buy and transport hardware. And it takes time to set up the hardware, install the software. There's, there are expansion limitations. As you saw, the room that we have, 52 square meters, that's the box. There's no possible, uh, no possibility to extend the, the data center. And it's actually rather costly. The price running a virtual server in a local data center is about 5% higher per server than running it in, uh, in the cloud. The cloud-based data center, the pros with that is it's a big store uh, with all the components that you could think of at any time, at any day. So if you need this, then you pick this and you build whatever you would like to build. It's a high security data center. I can guarantee that there's not many Swedish companies that will come up to the security that the, the dragons like Microsoft, Google or Amazon or maybe Facebook will, will achieve all the certifications that they have. There's also a high availability and it's also a high mobility. You can access the data center from any place in the world. You can do that at many of the local data centers too, but what you need is actually much more software on the PC. It's harder to access a, a data center in the cloud, uh, uh, locally, from an internet cafe. And uh, the cons is, it's not that security questions are not uh, put up in a local data center. The problem is that security questions when it comes to cloud-based data centers tend to uh, bubble up much faster when you discuss if you're going into a cloud data center for some reason. And I, I think this could be paired with a sense of control pro when it comes to the local data center. Another con, or a, maybe not a con, as, uh, service level agreements are as important uh, in a local data center as in a cloud data center. The difference is that cloud-based data center is a form of outsourcing. You actually outsource the operations of the servers or the one of the layers at least. So you need to deep dive into the service level agreements to understand what what they actually do. Because some systems, they only do a full backup each day. You can never have any delta restores. So the backup is 20, 100. And if you lose data at 1900, then you need to roll back a complete day if you don't look at the SLAs. Data transfer, when it comes to a cloud-based data center, has a price. There's not many operation engineers today that know, know how much data is traveling from, from one server to another server. And they, they measure the amount and put a price on the amount of data. Cloud-based data centers, there's a price for everything moving out from the data center. So if I download one megabyte of information from a cloud-based data center, I will pay a price for that. And 
that and many, many other things is it's very important to design a cloud-based data center correctly. And here's one thing that we have a Microsoft Dynamics CRM online, which is a customer-based customer relation management system that we use for sales and support. There's a lot of information that we use Power BI to, to analyze the data. And this is very important. Where are we going to place the data warehouse? It's very important for us to design the data center correctly, understanding where is actually the, the Dynamics database located. So we put the data warehouse as close as possible to the, uh, to the system, the source system. These two data centers, the local data center and the cloud-based, are using uh, they, they could, the, cloud, the communication with a cloud, cloud data center could go over internet. But um, Microsoft has something called, called an express route, which is a private internet, you could say, which connects our company directly to the data centers. So there's no other traffic in those fiber channels but us. That means that we have a better performance when, when it comes to latency, and a higher security when it comes to transferring information. And this is forming Hoogia Hybrid Cloud. So that's a very fast comparison between a local data center and a cloud-based data center. I will now go into green initiatives. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to put money into green initiatives if you have a local data center? And the answer is yes and yes. There are different aspects to this. The other one, one of them are cost reduction. What you do in green initiatives will actually lowers the cost that you pay for electricity. And the other one, which is harder to measure, is the branding of the company profile, the branding of the way we look at our employees when we are recruiting them, and uh, sustainability in common. Here's an example of a cost reduction case for our new data center. The new data center is using water as a cooling agent. We lead cold water into uh, the data center and get back a bit warmer water from out from the data center. And we're using what's called free cooling chillers. This is nothing new. This most new data centers build like this when they are quite small at least. Uh, what we have achieved is more or less some advanced um, systems how we run these chillers. So what we have done is we have lowered, this is also interesting when it comes to this day's session regarding information. These systems are pouring out real-time data at a speed, enormous amounts of data that we actually need in order to optimize the performance of the data center in order to lower the, the cost of the, the shillers. So we went from the other two data centers that we have, they have a PUE number of 1.8, and we lowered that to 1.3. So what's a PUE? PUE is a measurement of how much electrici electricity you need to consume to cool down the water. So if the servers use one kilowatt of uh, energy to run, then you need to put 800 watts into the cooling systems. So if you had a number of PUE of uh, 2.0, that would mean that your cooling system would consume as much power as the service would. So we went from 1.8 to 1.3. So our cooling system only consumes 30% of what the service are consuming. 
Totally, the data center consumes about 400 megawatts hours per year. And this will be a cost reduction for us by 200 Swedish krona per year. So let's compare us with the dragons. Facebook in Luleå, here in Sweden, uses 400 gigawatts. They consume 1,000 times more than we do. One of their data centers consumes as much as the steel industry company SSAB is doing in Luleå for one data center. They are finishing their second and are about to start up the third data center. They will consume 1.2 terawatts of energy per year for three data centers for Facebook only. They have a PUE of 105. And the reason they can achieve uh, such a low number is that, first of all, they are up in Luleå. Secondly, they don't have any roof on the data center. It's fresh air. They have a, they call it the second floor, they call a penthouse. It's actually a, a rain roof. So that, that's why they don't need any cooling systems, actually. The surrounding area cools down the, 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 the water or the air. Each data center is about 13 to 17,000 square meters. That's two and a half soccer fields, one data center. Uh, our data center is 52 square feet, uh, meters. 52 square meters compared to 13,000. I mean, I wish you could see this one sometime. That's an example of a cost reduction green initiative. Example of branding. And this is the green initiative that it's actually hard to uh, prove any uh, kickback uh, when it comes to money. All electricity that we consume is delivered from Göteborg Energi and marked with Bra Miljöval. That means that we are only consuming solar, wind and water as um, power sources and a bit more uh, parameters that need to be fulfilled in order to be marked Bra Miljöval. And the value here is in bus marketing. And today these initiatives matter for the next generation. Finally, I skip through this and give it, uh, I think my time's running out, right? The ne next thing we are going to do in our data center is that Inside the data center, we have a warm ale, an aisle, uh, 35 degrees Celsius, and the surrounding area is about 26 degrees. So we lead cold water inside, and that's the, the arrow pointing at 22 degrees, and the return water is 28 degrees. And this goes into the cooling system, and the surrounding air will uh, lower the temperature by itself down to 22. The only electricity electricity that we use is the pumps. The next initiative here is to take this warm water, lead it out into the facility sidewalks where we are using distance heating today. And in the winter time, this 28 degree hot water will melt the snow and prevent icing. And that's what we're doing today with distance heating that we pay money for. And in summertime, we shut down this distance heating in the sidewalks. But in this case, we can let the 28 degree water uh, go into the sidewalks and actually be cooled down by the ground. Even though the sun is gazing and it's 30 degrees, it's maybe only 12, 34 centimeters below ground. So the ground will actually lower the temperature of these 28 degrees water and helping the cooling systems in the summer.
Thank you.